Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with another double unboxing. This time we're taking a look at the all new Airport Extreme and Airport Time Capsule. So this was just announced at WWDC 2013 and represent the first redesign of these products since they debuted around 2007. Now you can see we now have a taller form factor which is necessitated by the new wireless standard which is 802.11ac. So the antennas are now mounted higher and there are six antennas in here, both supporting 2.4 gigahertz, so three supporting 2.4 4 gigahertz and 3 supporting 5 gigahertz. Now 802.11ac supports beam forming which basically means that this is directionally aware. It knows where your devices are and will beam or form the signal toward those devices so you get better signal quality without flooding the area with lots of extra signal that's not being picked up. So that's one way that this improves overall performance. Now otherwise these are basically the same devices that perform the same functions but the time capsule has a built-in hard disk drive which works with the backup feature called Time Machine in OS X which is built into OS X. So basically it perpetually backs up your OS X installation, saves all your files, anytime you make changes to your computer, anytime you add files to your computer it automatically backs it up. So the idea here is you can restore from that backup or you can retrieve files that you've deleted. Now it's kind of nice that these finally share the same design. Now the Extreme and Time Capsule look similar but they were different in size and the Extreme had an external power supply. So it's nice that the Extreme has finally built in the power supply just like the Time Capsule. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we get first starting off with the Airport Extreme. Now the Airport Extreme is available for $199 which is a price increase from the $169 of the previous generation but of course you do get the latest Wi-Fi standard and you get beam forming. So this is one of the first routers I've seen that supports 802.11ac's beam forming so that's kind of a nice bonus. So let's go ahead and crack this open. You can see that this top of the box slides up. I'm going to slice open the plastic here. Alright so we're just going to lift up on the box. And there it is, as you can see it's kind of resting in a tray. If you look inside there's actually a little box that surrounds the top of it to support it. So there you go. It looks very strange. It actually looks like a series of stacked airport expresses. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Set that aside. So here we have our box containing some other information here. Well, not only information but our power cable as well as our setup guide. So here is our Airport Extreme setup guide. So this is basic. You can set this up on either iOS, Mac OS X, or using the Airport Utility on a Windows machine. So this will work across platforms. All right, so let's go ahead and peel this wrapper off. You can see it's a very glossy white plastic. Quite a bit of it. So there you go. You also have another protector here for the bottom. Nice shiny black Apple logo. You get that nice foot down here which is rubberized. You can also see we have some ventilation around the bottom which is nicely hidden when it's sitting on the tabletop. Up top you see we have this sort of matte finish to the plastic. Glossy finish along the side. That black Apple logo toward the center which is a little different. Usually you see this sort of polished like a glossy white plastic like you see with the Express. Down here we have our ports. So we have our three LAN ports. This is Gigabit Ethernet. We also have our WAN port. This is for your internet access. And you have a USB port for connecting external hard disk drives or a USB printer. So you can make your, your non-wireless printer wireless just by connecting it to USB. Of course you have your power supply and your reset button. Now like all airport devices we have a LED status indicator. So green means, a solid green means that it's operating normally. If it's a solid amber it's starting up. If it's a blinking amber it means it can't establish a connection or something else is wrong. And if you have an alternating amber and green blinking light then something is really wrong. And you have to take a look to see what's going on. So let's go ahead and connect this up and get it set up for the first time. Alright so I've plugged in my Airport Extreme and if you look at the bottom you'll now see I have a blinking amber LED light indicating that this still needs to be set up. So what I need to do now is I can either go to my Mac or my PC and use the Airport Utility or I can go to my iOS device, either my iPad or my iPhone or iPod Touch. All I have to do is go to Settings, make sure I have Wi-Fi turned on, go to Wi-Fi, it will scan my network, it will see the Airport Extreme broadcasting its presence. So all I have to do is tap on that. It's now gathering data about my network. Now for my particular setup it sees my existing time capsule and is asking me if I want to use the Airport Extreme to replace it. I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to go to Other Options and click Next. 
So what do you want to do with this Airport Extreme? What I can do is create a new network or add it to an existing network. So that's what I want to do. The Airport Extreme will be set up to extend the time capsule. So now this will extend the range of my existing network. So let's click Next. All right, so now it's telling me that this Airport Extreme will be set up to extend the time capsule. So I'll click Next. Now I just need to enter my password to change the configuration. All right, so my setup is complete and I'm ready to start using my base station. So if you look here, you can see that I have a green light, which means I'm ready to go. Now you can also manage your router using Apple's Airport Utility. So it's a free app. If you go uh, to the app right here, you can see it will see your entire network makeup. So it sees my extreme right here, as well as my time capsule. So you can see they're in range extender mode. I also have my Airport Express here, which I disconnected just to show you guys the size difference. So that's why it's reading that uh, problem. So that means I can tap on any one of these. All I have to do is enter my password and I can go ahead and change its settings. Now onto the time capsule. This is available in two capacities, two and three terabytes. So the two terabytes starts you off at 299, three terabytes starts you off at 399. So uh, again, this is pretty much the Airport Extreme with a built-in hard disk drive. Also has an internal power supply, just like the previous generation time capsule. So I'm just gonna quickly unbox this thing and show you. They pretty much look the same. There is no design distinction on them. You can't tell them apart unless you look at the fine print on the bottom. So let's go ahead and uh, crack this plastic open. All right, so let's just lift this very tall lid. There you go, identical packaging. All right, so let's just peel off this plastic. I think I got the hang of it this time. There you go. Now we also have our little protector on the bottom. And although there are no Apple stickers, you do get a little Apple logo on the bottom of this sticker. Now on the back we have our power supply, reset button, our WAN port for internet. We also have our USB port for connecting an external hard drive. This is a USB 2.0 port by the way, where you can connect a USB printer. We also have three LAN ports. Again, these are all gigabit uh, ports, ethernet ports. Again, on the, back, on the top we have our black Apple logo. We have our amber LED indicator. On the bottom we have our cooling plate. There's actually a slight design change here. So we have this uh, same pedestal on the back, not design change, but design difference between this and the extreme. You can see if we look at the bottom of the extreme, we have a flat surface on the um, time capsule. We actually have these little nubs here. Uh, this is a heavier device as well, obviously, because we have more internal hardware. We can also see the packaging is slightly different with this indent, so designed by Apple in California. We have our power cable, as well as our literature here. So this is the airport time capsule setup guide, which is a little different than setting up the airport extreme, and I'll show you that. Now to set up the time capsule, I'm gonna use OS X and the airport utility. Again, you can also use iOS, or you can use Windows using the airport utility that you can download. So let's go to airport utility. So right now it sees my existing time capsule. I've actually disconnected it from the internet so I can set up the new one. So let's go to other Wi-Fi devices. You can see up here in the upper left. It sees my airport time capsule, three terabyte. So right now it's gathering information about my existing network. Now because I have an existing time capsule, it's asking me if I want to replace it. But in this demo, I want to show you what most users will probably do, which is set it up as a new router. So let's go to other options. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new network. So let's click that and click next. So the Wi-Fi network or the network name is Michael's Wi-Fi network. The base station name is Michael's Airport Time Capsule and I can change this. Now I just need to set my password. All right, so now it's creating a new wireless network. All right, so there we go. You can see the status of our network. So you can see my time capsule connected to my internet. I can tap on this to administer this. So I can go to edit. Here I can you know, change my settings, my firewall settings, wireless settings, network settings. Now, as I said, the time capsule works with Time Machine, which is built into OS X. So I'm just gonna go up here to go to open Time Machine preferences to set this up for the first time. So I'm gonna click on Time Machine. Now it needs to select a disk. So right now it sees my available disks on my network and one of them is data, which is my time capsule. This other one here, the Seagate four terabyte is the USB drive I connected to that time capsule. So if you connect another USB hard drive to your time capsule, you can use that as your backup disk or you can use the one included internally. So in fact, if we go to Finder, go to Shared, you'll see my time capsule as well as my four terabyte drive on my network. All right, so let's go ahead and select data. 
So we're going to use that disk. We're going to enter our password. All right, so that's complete. And if we go to backup now, you'll see it start backing up. And you get a little animation up here in the upper tray indicating that we're currently backing up our drive. So the great thing about Time Machine is that it backs up everything in the background. All your files, photos, videos, your settings, everything are constantly being backed up in the background. So you don't have to think about it. It's happening automatically. So this means that you can, in theory, restore your backup of your existing computer to a new computer. That's something that's available when you set up OS X for the first time. Or you can retrieve individual files you've deleted. So for example, if you didn't mean to delete that document last Friday, you can drill back to the past to pick up that document and restore it. So everything is saved constantly on that time capsule. The only barrier you run into is when you run out of space on that time capsule. So uh, you want to choose your size wisely. Three terabyte is quite a bit. Uh, but if you want even larger capacity, again, you can connect an even larger drive, such as that 4 terabyte drive I have connected right now. Now, as you can see, there's a huge design difference between the previous generation time capsule and the new time capsule. So although this kind of looks bigger just because it has a higher profile, this is pretty large if you look at face down. So you can see it's pretty large. It's almost as wide as, it's actually wider than this is tall. And if you look at it from this perspective, you can see it takes about a quarter of that surface area. So yes, it's fairly strange looking, but it's actually not that big or it's about as big compared to the existing time capsule. Now in terms of I.O., we also have the same I.O., just stacked a little differently here. So if we look back here, we still have the WAN port, three LAN ports, a reset button, the power supply, as well as the USB port. Same story here. Uh, what we have here is a Kensington lock, which we do not have anymore on the new time capsule. Now the Airport Extreme joins the redesigned Airport Express, and you can see they actually share a design, but of course this is low profile versus the high profile design of the Extreme. So if you stack them on top of each other, you can see it has the exact same dimensions uh, as the uh, Extreme. So you can see they share a similar design. But again, it looks like they just stacked a bunch of Airport Expresses on top of each other. Now my only problem with this design is that this is a pretty slippery surface. So this does not grip a desk very well. I've already had this kind of slide off my desk with the weight of the cables on the back. So that's kind of a problem. I wish they had gone with a rubber foot like you got with the bottom of this one. So you can see this is very grippy. All right, guys, so that is the new time capsule and Airport Extreme. Again, if you want to tell the difference between the two and you don't have the packaging with you, just look at the bottom. You have those little nubs for the time capsule, and, of course, it is much heavier. And, of course, with the Extreme, it's a flat surface, and it's much lighter. Uh, so, again, $299 or $399, $199, uh, 2 terabyte or 3 terabyte, and, of course, supports 802.11ac, which works great with your new... 11 inch or 13 inch MacBook Air that supports AC. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks guys and I'll see you again in the next one.